Welcome to the new sound of online radio. Welcome to the sound of Universal Broadcasting Network. Cause you make me feel like I've been locked out of heaven. A mix of today's hits and hard to find favorites. Combined with the most entertaining and intriguing talk anywhere. This is your sound. This is the sound of Universal Broadcasting Network at UENradio.com. Hello, hello, hello. This is Chris Therese and welcome to another episode of Rebel Hearts. I am so grateful you're joining us today. And today we'll have a guest who's teaching us something that I'm so, so passionate about. But before I introduce him to you, I want to just share a couple of things that we have going on here at Rebel Hearts. As you might know, my website, christyreeves.com, has just recently been updated. So if you're looking for some more inspiration or want to tune into some of our previous shows, just go to christyreeves.com and you'll find the Rebel Hearts Library. And it has all the links to our YouTube channel and to iHeartRadio and iTunes. So listen to our shows. And then if you are inspired by our shows, leave us a comment on our YouTube channel and let us know what about that interview inspired you. What did you learn from it? What was your take? away because it gives us a little bit of information about what you're looking for and really, really what you're getting out of our shows. So join us at christyreeves.com. And we are also now having a newsletter that goes out weekly and gives you tidbits of information about our shows, announces when the new replays are available and all kinds of insider information. So join our mailing list to stay tuned. And the show will actually be on hiatus for December and part of January. So our last show is going to be December 6th. But if you want to stay in touch with me, I will be in Germany and teaching an online workshop about ancient wisdom. And it's based on some ancient Celtic and German traditions called the 12 Sacred Nights. And it's a time between Christmas and January 5th, which is a really, really serendipitous and really special and sacred time. And there were certain practices or traditions, even rituals that were practiced during pre-Christian Europe. And I'll be talking to you about that. It's really a time to reflect, look back at the old year and, you know, do a little bit of inventory and look at what has worked really, really well, what you want to take with you in the new year. But also become really clear about the seeds that you want to plant, things you want to start creating, bringing into the physical, manifesting for the new year. So it's really a great kind of life-shifting clarity class. So let's talk a little bit about today's show. Um, today's guest is really, um, his work has really touched my heart over the last several years. And I actually had a personal incident many years ago where a dear friend of mine called me saying that her 22 months old daughter was diagnosed with social behavioral disorder. And she was cited into the psychiatrist, the school psychiatrist's office, and they were suggesting to place her 22 months old daughter on psychoactive medication because she was just not operating the way she was expected to operate. And luckily, my friend called me at that time and said, hey, do you have any solutions for me? And I gave her a couple of books. But at that time, I didn't really have the resources available or all the information available. But luckily, whatever was in the books actually gave her the tools to create the change her kid needed. And she transferred the kid to a different school where she actually started thriving. It was, she just needed a change of environment and, and smaller classes. That was all she needed. And that so-called social behavioral disorder was completely irrelevant. And if I saw her kid a few months later, and she was thriving, and she was the leader of all these children. And that incident, I was actually so angry when she told me about her 22-month-old kid, this beautiful, high-sensitive girl being told something was wrong with her. She was had a disorder. She had a social behavioral disorder. And then I met Dr. Kobe Farman a little while later, and he's been teaching about um, alternatives to psychoactive meds and really teaching us that we're all whole and complete and how we can all learn how to thrive. So I'm so honored to have him on my show today. And we've been producing a documentary series called The Children of the Rainbow, which is currently in its fourth season. There's a new show coming out this Friday, so you might even want to tune into that. Lots and lots of resources about thriving and helping children. Because, you know, children are our future, and by changing the way we raise them, we can actually change the world. So let me tell you a little bit about Dr. Kobe Foreman, who's also become a very dear friend of mine. I'm calling him my older brother. <laughs> So Dr. Kobe Foreman is a founder and pioneer of the field of psychoneurology. 
a field that emerges and integrates spirit, mind, and body, developing, thriving, and removing diagnoses and labels from children as well as adults. Dr. Foreman also founded Björn University, offering an education that bridges ancient wisdom with leading-edge technologies. Dr. Foreman lived in Jerusalem's ancient old city where he studied Kabbalah and received its rabbinic ordination while teaching and developing psychoneurology and speaking regularly in London at university and colleges such as Oxford, Cambridge, Manchester, as well as Leeds. Psychoneurology is a therapy practice that brings spirit, mind, and body into harmonious alignment that creates a direct experience of joy, freedom, and fulfillment. Don't we all want that, people? Second Neurology is a board-certified drug-free solution for those diagnosed with ADHD, OCD, anxiety disorder, virtually any psychological malady. The principle of second neurology is that each individual is already perfect and complete and thereby can achieve true thriving by integrating new resources and learnings. It is a radical innovation to contemporary therapies and has been called the most significant advance within human development in the last 100 years. I am so honored to have him on today's show. Please help me to welcome Dr. Kobe Foreman. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for being here, Kobe. Oh, I'm so happy to be here. It's been such a gift to know you. You've been such a great support in my life and such a great teacher. And I'm so excited to share some of your wisdom in today's show. I feel like we need a three-hour show to, start, to just like, give people a glimpse of what you're, you're teaching and all mm. the wisdom and knowledge you have. So hopefully we can pack as much as we can <laughs> <laughs> into the next 40 minutes or 45 minutes. So I actually want to start with your own journey because I feel like every single person who's on this show... Mm -hmm has a journey that inspired them to do whatever it is they're doing nowadays. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what was your inspiration, your motivation, that maybe a, even a turning point in your life where you said, I need to teach people about thriving? Mm. Well, you know, um, even when I started out at a very young age, there were certain things that were obvious to me and that I was driven to. And one of those things was this concept of actually transparency and mm -hmm. being real. I was one of, I love working with adults and children that are incredibly sensitive people. Mm -hmm. My main thing is I run the university, but it's pure pleasure for me to work with people that touch my heart. Mm -hmm. I was one of those people. I'm one of those highly sensitive people. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things I was interested in was learning how to grow and thrive and become more and this kind of thing. And when I was growing up, we actually had a family therapist who was um, a psychiatrist. It was very like status symbol. He was like the top psychiatrist mm -hmm. over at Cedars. And um, at one point I asked him, I said, you don't really do very much, do you? <laughs> and he's like, well, it's kind of like being a friend. And, I, and he's like, but, you know, let's talk about you. And I would talk about, yeah, I'd really like to grow and expand. And, and he'd be like, well, what's wrong with you? Why aren't you good enough the way you are, Colby? And I was like, well, I am good enough the way I am, but I w I'd like to grow and do more and, mm -hmm. and, and have a larger impact. And he's like, well, why is your impact not enough now? Why are and I was like... This is one of those deals where, like, to a, <laughs> <laughs> to a hammer, everything's a nail, isn't it? Uh -huh. I'm like, you're still trying to fit this into some kind of problem, and if I don't have a problem, you're not sure how to <laughs> deal with me, are you? And he was like, yeah, you know, it's true. And I actually know him to this day, and he's, <laughs> he's become a good friend. But that was one of the, you know, one of my impetuses from the beginning was to help people grow and help people mm -hmm. thrive and to actually help us become the very most we could be. I also went through the university system, and I... I traveled, I lived in the Middle East for five years, I was a Kabbalist, and in all these travels and things that I did, one of the reoccurring themes I kept seeing was um, people who are highly sensitive, mm -hmm. who can't be shoved through the mainstream academia, some of the most talented healers, some of mm -hmm. the people that are just called to give are not usually the people that are necessarily going to be pushed through the mainstream traditional uh, training, and yet they're the most gifted, they're the most mm -hmm. talented yeah. people. So. Yeah. Really, my impetus was there was one day when I was speaking at Oxford and I was sitting with a group of professors and they were all talking about the politics and all the nonsense <laughs> of the things they had to go through. <laughs> and I said, you know, um, what if you guys actually were involved in an environment where instead of them tearing you down because defending your mm -hmm. dissertation is like defending your dissertation, mm -hmm. what if it was an environment that was nurturing and nourishing and loving? What would that be like? Mm -hmm. And they were like, oh, that sounds great. And I'm like, and mm -hmm. you were all talking about your dissertation just sat on the shelf somewhere. What if you wrote something that was like birthing out mm -hmm. something from your core that you literally gave something to humanity or children mm -hmm. or 
And they were like, oh, that sounds amazing. <laughs> and then I was like, and then what if it was, you know, you're talking about most of you, because there were real leaders mm-hmm. in the field there, and most of you got your work outside of your degrees, where mm-hmm. you took extra work and extra studies and extra programs, excuse me. And um, what if it was all the stuff you really used? Mm-hmm. And they were like, oh, well, mate, we'll be your first students. Go ahead and make that or whatever. <laughs> but I have to tell you, I actually, something inside me, like uh, maybe some of you out there have the same thing where there's certain things you just know you can do. Mm-hmm. I knew I would be led to do this. Mm-hmm. And I um, started about this process and I, um, I was working as a U.S. liaison for the Jerusalem Spiritual Peace Accord at the time and I got um, several of the attorneys that were there. I, I pitched them on the most expensive dinner of my life and I got <laughs> like a quarter million dollars of free legal help and we founded this university, uh-huh. which was Amazing. a space, yeah, where we where we bridge ancient wisdom mm-hmm. with leading edge technologies. So that's, that was my, my impetus was just growing up my whole mm-hmm. life. I could see there could be more and there could be something that was so much more organic. Yeah, in the way we yeah. learn. And what I know about BU is that you just so are creating a place of love mm-hmm. and comfort, but also, you know, I've, I've attended a lot of summits, Rebel Hearts, and they're obviously amazing. And you take time to check in and see how you're feeling and just like go into that really extremely loving space. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. it was interesting, as you know, we just interviewed someone for the new um, season for the Children of the, Dog of the, of the Rainbow. Mm-hmm. And she talked about the current education system and how there is no communication. Kids are not raised in a loving environment. And the problems we're facing. How was it for you growing up? What, what were some of the things where you said, oh my gosh, I wish I had a more loving environment? Or this is, you know, parts of the school school system that I'm like, that could be made different. And that's what I choose to turn into be you. Yeah, that's absolutely true. When I um, I was a pretty eccentric kid, so I wasn't pretty <laughs> normal. I would like leave school for, I remember when I was in high school, I left school for weeks. And at one point, <laughs> and I was studying Wicca and I was studying these other things. And um, at one point I got pulled into the principal's office and my mom left with me. She's like, Colby, what, what were you doing? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm trying to put my hands on the levers of creation. <laughs> I was like 15 and I'm like, I'm really trying to understand the stuff that works, mom, mm-hmm. that's real and mm-hmm. the stuff we're learning is pretty inane. It's yeah, not gonna yeah. help me or anyone else. Mm-hmm. I I wanted to make a space where it would actually be the things you truly used. Mm-hmm. And it was the, the other thing you're saying that's so important. I also, um, for a while, I was so moved by Virginia Satir, who was one mm-hmm. of the most loving people I ever knew and Milton Erickson and the people who patterned them were NLP experts, Richard Bandler and John Grinder. Mm-hmm. So I studied with those guys for a while because they created results nobody ever did. Mm-hmm. And one of the things I learned from him that I never forgot was that memories, learnings are emotionally coded. Mm-hmm. So whatever emotion you're in, you have to return to that emotion to get the learnings. Okay, mm-hmm. That's yeah. why if you talk to a friend and they were talk about an argument they had, they go back to it, they get all upset again, right? <laughs> yeah. It's like yeah. because <laughs> memories are emotionally mm-hmm. coded. Mm-hmm. I wanted to live in what would be heaven and earth for me. Mm-hmm. So we wanted to create an experience that would be so loving and so nurturing mm-hmm. that when you're learning, think about the best teacher you ever had in your life, okay? The best teacher you ever had in your whole life, you probably felt amazing when you're around them, right? Mm-hmm. You felt so good. And that makes it pleasant to return back to those memories. Mm-hmm. So we knew one of the first things we wanted to do was create vibration, a space that was so loving and so mm-hmm. nurturing. Mm-hmm. And then from that space, learn. And our yeah. students are geniuses and they're mm-hmm. all geniuses. Einstein said every child is born a genius. Mm-hmm. And if you do create the right environment, that will emerge from yeah. anyone. Yeah. So yeah. I love that. I <laughs> love that, love that, love that. <laughs> and we're going to talk a little bit more about vibration in a moment. But before we do that, I would love to exp- have you explain mm-hmm. to our audience what is psychoneurology? Because you found the field of psychoneurology. So share with us what is psychoneurology about? Mm. Well, there's so. In five, like in five minutes, words. as quickly as you can. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, one of the things um, psychoneurology is really using the wisdom that we have in in ancient wisdom to help us define our imperatives. Let me give an example. Mm-hmm. Um, when I studied Kundalini with Yogi Bhajan before he passed, mm-hmm. um, in our training pro- in our instructor training program, he always said, "Wherever your attention goes is where the Kundalini flows." Yeah. The, the work I've done with the unconscious, which is mm-hmm. my life's passion, mm-hmm. is exactly the same kind of thing. Whatever you put your attention on, you get. Mm-hmm. Like to the unconscious, if I say, don't think of a white horse. We all think of a white right. horse, you right? You think of a yeah. white horse, exactly. Yeah. So our, our traditional system that is diagnosis brings our attention to what we don't want. Mm-hmm. And it expands naturally. That's why the DSM, I'm sure you've talked about this, I believe you yeah. have, mm-hmm. started out with just a few things and grows and grows and grows. Yeah. Because the more you put your attention on something, the more mm-hmm. it expands. Mm-hmm. 
people who create thriving, who are masters of joy and this kind of thing, and a lot of these are ancient traditions, they put their attention on where they want to go. Behaviorists got a, a success rate that no one else had ever gotten because they started focusing on bringing people directly and showing the mind what to do, mm -hmm. okay? So psychoneurology has its focus on what we call adding resources, mm -hmm. giving you what you want. Yeah, I have a, in my practice, I've never had an unsuccessful case yet. I've worked with hundreds and actually now several thousand it, cases for ADD mm -hmm. and we've always had 100% success rate. And it's the reason is, is because it's not about getting rid of something called ADD. ADD is a lack of a specific resource, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. focusing in this relaxed, focused state. Psychoneurology mm -hmm. is really about, we eschew labeling people, it, do, mm -hmm. it just gets in the way. Mm -hmm. And we actually talk about finding the resources that people need to help mm -hmm. them thrive. So. Yeah. Yeah, I've worked with over two dozen patients labeled with schizophrenia. Every one of them were completely different. They had different things they needed. All of them are now thriving as well. Mm -hmm. And all of them are outside of those institutional mm -hmm. situations. Yeah. And basically, each one of them needed different things. And I just patterned Milton Erickson. Mm -hmm. He was asked at a psychiatric convention. He'd cured 5,000 schizophrenics. And yeah. they said, Dr. Erickson, <laughs> how did you cure 5,000 schizophrenics? He said, because there's no such thing as schizophrenia. Uh -huh. <laughs> He's like, it's broken mind syndrome. It's a ridiculous mm -hmm. concept. Because was each person needed something else. And mm -hmm. I helped them find what they needed and I helped them, you know, integrate those resources. Psychoneurology is based on that approach. So basically, mm -hmm. when you absolutely need a result, need something to happen, you go to a mm -hmm. psychoneurologist. Mm -hmm. That's what yeah, you do. That's what you do. And tell us, you know, what is the difference? Because a lot of people are, have been going through psychiatrists, psychologists. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what is the difference, the main difference between psychoneurology versus psychiatry, psychology? Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, like we said, the, the direction, mm -hmm. okay, the direction is all the difference in the world. Um, for example, in the DSM, mm -hmm. Richard Bandler pointed out that the, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, and there's not a single statistic in it, mm -hmm. by the way, it just sounds more scientific, <laughs> not one statistic's in there, but the DSM is thousands of cases or pages of how people mm -hmm. are broken. Mm -hmm. But like we said, you have to show the mind what to do. You have mm -hmm. to direct what you do mm -hmm. want to create. There's mm -hmm. not a single page on what a healthy human mm -hmm. being is. Psychiatry, psychology is just following the pathology-driven model, which was you define a problem or mm -hmm. a pathology, and then you negate it. You try to yes. make it go away. Mm -hmm. So you put your attention on the problem, mm -hmm. try to make it go away. Mm -hmm. Same in psychology. Mm -hmm. Psychology is really most of us who got involved, if we wanted to go into psychiatry or psychology and really help people mm -hmm. thrive, most psychologists do. Most of us found it's kind of psychology or mm -hmm. psychiatry, yeah, right? Yeah. You're just finding mm -hmm. diseases and trying to get rid of them, but it becomes mm -hmm. your focus. Mm -hmm. Psychoneurology, on the other hand, is entirely different. Mm -hmm. Psychoneurology asks the question, what is needed here? Mm -hmm. Can I give a metaphor? Yeah, give us okay. a metaphor, yes. And, and years ago, um, Christie's even helped me with this, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, basically, um, we used to believe the only reason you don't have what you want is because of blocks that stopped mm -hmm. you. But mm -hmm. the way the mind works, it doesn't work so much. It needs specific strategies. So mm -hmm. if somebody was running east looking for a sunset, mm -hmm. if we it, that person would come with the problem. They don't have an effective strategy. They would come to us, and if I was a typical in my traditional therapy practice as mm -hmm. a psychiatrist, I would I di diagnose them, right? Mm -hmm. I would do what a, a doctor, an allopathic physician mm -hmm. would do. First, okay, you have SDD, sunset mm -hmm. denial disorder, <laughs> right? I mean, and mm -hmm. I would come up with medications or things to try to help you get mm -hmm. over your sunset denying tendency. <laughs> yeah. Um, because that would be the idea that there's a block and we need to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. The psychoneurologist would say, what is needed here? Mm -hmm. Well, this person needs to, I mean, in this very simple metaphor, <laughs> this person needs to learn how to get to the West. So we would kind of guide, put our hands on our, their shoulders and guide them to the West. And that's very much, by the way, like mm -hmm. ADD. It's really, there's a way of processing mm -hmm. we call the alpha brainwave state. And when you process and can take yourself there traditionally, and it's something you want to feel in your gut. Mm -hmm. I can train any adult or any child to feel that feeling in their gut. Now you have that for a lifetime, and yeah. you've rendered the label not only just inaccurate, it's just not even helpful. Yeah, yeah. The problem with labeling is that it becomes part of our identity, and the exactly, hardest thing to change yeah. for a child or an mm -hmm. adult is when something becomes part of what you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I see that constantly where a mother might go, oh, you're so ADD talking to that child because that's the diagnosis I got from there. 
mm-hmm. psychologist, psychiatrist mm-hmm. probably. Mm-hmm. And then the child really owning that label and going, mm-hmm. yeah, I cannot do this because I'm ADD. Mm-hmm. And it becomes such a mechanism in their daily behavior or sometimes even an excuse to not f- step into their full potential. Oh, I cannot have my full potential because I, I am ADD or I am ADHD or I have social behavioral disorder, whatever right. the label is. Or and if they're highly sensitive and creative like so many people mm-hmm. are, mm-hmm. they'll say, oh, it's good that I'm ADD. They'll turn it into something good, but they're still mm-hmm. playing within the matrix. Yeah. They're still playing in the mm-hmm. false belief that mm-hmm. they are ADD, mm-hmm. when in fact, all they really need is a particular resource. And once mm-hmm. they have that resource on command, yeah. then they can go to that space mm-hmm. whenever they want. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so why, why, why label yourself mm-hmm. by your limitations? Mm-hmm. Even if you're enhancing them and saying, it's good that I'm ADD, mm-hmm. it's just another way of playing with inside their mm-hmm. box. Yeah. And it's not accurate. Yeah. And tell us a little bit about Freud. Who's actually the founder of <laughs> psychology? Because there's a really great story that we talked about sharing today. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Well, basically, uh, what, this goes back to, you know, um, ancient wisdom mm-hmm. is incredible. And, it, it, you know, there are human beings through the eons who've known how to do the things that are most important in life mm-hmm. and have a sense of that. Science is kind of like, uh, if, if you were to use the tribal analogy, science is like the young warriors. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't have the young warriors that are 15 years old decide what's best for the tribe or what we should build. <laughs> yeah. You have the, el- the elders do that. Mm-hmm. And basically, that's really the idea. You know, mm-hmm. there's ancient wisdom that teaches us exactly how to be happy in life and how mm-hmm. to have a joyful life. Mm-hmm. But science is really like that young, strong you know, mm-hmm. word that doesn't have that. Freud himself was absolutely miserable. And yes, he was. Carl Jung wanted <laughs> to kind of point that out. Yeah. He wanted to expose that. And there was about 200 reporters. And he asked mm-hmm. in this very public um, <laughs> interview, he's like, Dr. Freud, can modern man be happy? And Freud answered emphatically, nine. nine. No. <laughs> the best modern man can hope for is to be unhappy in an mm-hmm. unhappy world. And we call that well-adjusted. <laughs> so that, and so if you're going to pattern the, mm-hmm. the founder and what mm-hmm. their work is, mm-hmm. you know, then you're certainly going to get a very different result. Mm-hmm. In psychoneurology, thriving is is we believe your birthright. And by the yeah. way, I would use someone like, um, if you're familiar with Yogananda, Paramahansa Yogananda. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, contrast that story with he was coming across um, from to the United States with this gentleman who'd filmed some Ingrid uh, uh, Bergman and, and, and Humphrey Bogart films and things mm-hmm. like this. He was this uh, famous producer. And um, he, Yogananda right away picked up that this guy, it was a private plane that they were flying mm-hmm. on, that this guy just couldn't stand him. And the guy couldn't <laughs> stand him. He couldn't stand his hair. He thought like he was like, a, he thought he was dressed like a girl in his calfskin. Uh-huh. And Yogananda sat right next to him <laughs> and, and he started talking to him. And the mm-hmm. guy um, said, you know, in this kind of voice that he had at the time, you know, this was like the, mm-hmm. <laughs> the 30s, the, the late 20s, early, yeah. late 20s, early 30s. <laughs> My dear boy, I'm incredibly wealthy and incredibly healthy. Whatever could you do for me? And Yogananda goes, well, you're not incredibly happy. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that and that I can help you with. Uh-huh. And um, the and he started yelling at him. And the story, mm-hmm. uh, you know, if, is actually Lake Shrine has it on DVD. Now I have mm-hmm. it on DVD. That man um, tells the story himself. He's like, oh, my God, I was so embarrassed because I started yelling at this incredible master. Mm-hmm. And uh, and Yogananda said, my friend, wise men discuss and mm-hmm. fools argue. Mm-hmm. So if we have a discussion and if at the end of it, your lo- your logic is superior to mine, I will mm-hmm. cut my hair and take up acting. <laughs> <laughs> he said, but if my logic is superior, mm-hmm. then you'll take mm-hmm. up meditation. Yeah. And yeah. the gentleman said, it was 1929. I was a multimillionaire and utterly miserable and I mm-hmm. actually attempted suicide once and wow. he, he said wow. I had to learn that happiness would not just come from the things mm-hmm. of the world yeah. and psychoneurology does teach mm-hmm. us that elegant use of our mind and nervous system yeah. is what creates heaven on earth it's something mm-hmm. you do on the inside yeah and I wanted you to go a little bit deeper into that because mm-hmm. I feel like we're living in times where there's tremendous transformation happening on this planet and there's been such imprinting programming whatever right. word we want to use mm-hmm. and this you know the Freud sense mm-hmm. You know, we cannot be happy. We have to be miserable. Mm -hmm. And this whole imprint of sacrifice, Mm -hmm. suffering as a virtue, the more you sacrifice yourself, the more, the better of a person you are. And it Mm -hmm. feels like there is such a transformation that is currently happening on this planet. Mm -hmm. And what is it that psychoneurology teaches us or that you even at Björn University are teaching Mm -hmm. that is going to help us go from that misery or the suffering sacrifice really into or from surviving into thriving? 
Well, okay, the concept anyway that joy is through suffering is mm -hmm. contradictory completely. Mm -hmm. But when you get stuck in the mind, you can mm -hmm. really lose your sense of vibration. There's, mm -hmm. I'm going to use a term called vibration here. The, mm -hmm. the term is your mind and your body working together. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, the vibration doesn't lie. You can mm -hmm. feel things, mm -hmm. okay? And that vibration speaks louder than anything mm -hmm. else. Well, yeah. um, uh, Gandhi took the um, uh, the Emerson quote, who you are screams so loudly in my ear, I can't hear what you're <laughs> yeah. saying, you know. Yeah. And so really that alignment is so mm -hmm. strong. Now, you know, throughout history, certain individuals cut off from that, will try to get us to ignore what actually our vibration is, what actually mm -hmm. feels good. Hitler was mm -hmm. brilliant with doing this. Mm -hmm. Actually, in his book, Mein Kampf, mm -hmm. he said those people, and I'm talking about uh, the, the Jews, sorcerers, mm -hmm. etc. those people put two scars on humanity, circumcision on the body and conscience on the soul. Mm -hmm. So when someone would come up mm -hmm. to him and say, if somebody did approach him and say, if you're, this feels bad, what we're doing, this feels bad, mm -hmm. he would say, that's just your wounds talking. Oh, wow. Now help destroy them once and for all so no one has to suffer like you suffer. For future generations don't have to suffer like it. Mm -hmm. Can you see how you could twist yeah, yeah, yeah. things? So there is this very odd twisting, and this occurred a long time ago, and uh, you know, one of the things we study in BU is ancient mm -hmm. wisdom, mm -hmm. and we study how those things have really turned around so that mm -hmm. kind of good has become bad. But Yogi Bhajan, uh, said something to me right before he punched me in the arm because I was talking about psychoneurology. <laughs> in the arm. <laughs> if you want to be joyful, we, we teach mm -hmm. people to build mm -hmm. joy. You don't become mm -hmm. joyful through misery, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. and, and literally, you know, if you're going to, and he said it, he said, you're right, Colby, the road to joy is joy. And then he hit <laughs> me in the arm. <laughs> and that's ab absolutely yeah, true. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so paying attention to that kind of awareness, people are waking up mm -hmm. all around the planet. Mm -hmm. And I believe we're sent mm -hmm. to be here, yeah, right? I believe yeah. that that's what we're here to do. Mm -hmm. And I believe that each one of us is here and we have something deep inside that's going to help, you mm -hmm. know? Um, my, I call that my North Star. When mm -hmm. we teach you to feel and connect to what truly feels good, mm -hmm. what feels better than mm -hmm. anything else. And when you live from that, I'm like a professional kid, <laughs> you know? I would pay to do what I do. I'm so grateful I get to mm -hmm. do this. And I feel like I'm the luckiest person in the world. I want everyone to feel that. Yeah. And you, you're certainly like that, mm -hmm. you know? I've, Christy's been like a sister to me for sure. And I've always mm -hmm. seen, we've always mm -hmm. been yeah. that way. And so, yeah, I believe part of it is helping people connect to that. And mm -hmm. they have been taught through shame or certain other things to disregard, to not count mm, or not mm -hmm. to be able to listen to that inner voice mm -hmm. or feel into that inner yeah, core. Yeah. And when you live from your core, then it certainly doesn't feel like work. I don't feel like I've worked <laughs> yeah. a job in like over 35 years, maybe, you know. So, yeah. 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 Um, I love that. Thank you so much. I want to switch around a little bit or mm -hmm. return to you working with people who are diagnosed psychiatrically. Sure. Yeah, yeah. And because you work with a lot of kids who are labeled ADD, ADHD, social behavioral disorder, anxiety disorder, mm -hmm. all kinds of disorder that mm -hmm. are in the DSM. Absolutely. And you've had some amazing stories that you shared with me. But before we go into these stories, mm -hmm. share with me what is it that you are doing different, like something, something maybe specifically that you did with these kids mm -hmm. in order to kind of, you know, make the label, you know, completely... Well, our approach is different. Yeah. Um, the traditional approach is diagnosis and then treatment. Mm -hmm. And um, so you look for the problem, and treatment mm -hmm. is to make the problem go away. Mm -hmm. We realize that doesn't actually generate change. You need mm -hmm. to add something new. And the unconscious doesn't know how to create its own new learnings, mm -hmm. new neuropathies. Yeah. And the unconscious also doesn't judge negative, positive. It just is. Correct. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So um, we have a three-step process. The first mm -hmm. is calibrate, which is different mm -hmm. than diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Diagnosis is diagets two. It, mm -hmm. it, and temporally, time-wise, it looks at this problem now and how it relates to past problems so we can link mm -hmm. it, so we can yeah, label it. Yeah. Calibration is more like if you're talking to a travel agent mm -hmm. and you go, I want to go to Dallas. Mm -hmm. First thing they're going to ask, what's your point of departure? Yeah. In other words, to get you to where we want to get you in the future, mm -hmm. where are you right now so we can get you there? Mm -hmm. And then we can figure out a train, a plane, a <laughs> bus, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the next step. The next step is to come to come up with the resource and then mm -hmm. integrate the resource. Mm -hmm. and, you know, uh, determine the resource. In this case, it would be, a, let's say, a plane. And then <laughs> integrate the resources, getting you on the plane and getting you over yeah. there. So our approach is completely based on getting you what you want. So mm -hmm. when you, you know, and it works virtually every time as long as we pick the people that we're working with properly and that, you know, and that the person's committed. Mm -hmm. And you have some amazing success. Do you, want to, do you want to share one or two with us? Sure. I mean, um, okay, yeah. One, uh, one that comes to mind was... Um, 
I was the fifth, you know, physician to work mm-hmm. with this one boy who was considered to have extreme social anxiety mm-hmm. disorder, um, as <laughs> AD. And, um, and after working with him a few months, by the way, I, I always establish a criteria for success. How do mm-hmm. we know what success looks mm-hmm. like? Again, we don't have to be geniuses at figuring out what the problem is. We need to mm-hmm. find out what is the solution or what is mm-hmm. the resource and mm-hmm. how are we going to know we're yeah. really there? Yeah. So this young man had not had any social interactions with his friends. He'd never gone out or done anything mm-hmm. with them. So I said, what would be success to the parents? And the dad said, God, you know, if he would go with his, he was uh, 11, if he would go to Calabasas Commons to a movie with his friends, oh my God, that'd be amazing, you know? Okay. Well, after three months, he actually went on his first date Yay! to Calabasas Commons <laughs> to a movie and his mom cried, you know? Oh my gosh. And out of the physicians, two of them were psychiatrists that were uh-huh. friends of mine, good uh-huh. friends of mine. And they said, what did you do that we didn't do? <laughs> you know, what did you do that was so different? In this mm-hmm. case, um, I, they'd already referred me, uh, usually mm-hmm. they're incurable. So, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, so they said, what did you do here? And I said, well, you guys worked on trying to negate a pathology. You were trying to fix this problem, this mm-hmm. wall called, mm-hmm. you know, uh, uh, you know um, emo- this uh, inability, social anxiety disorder. I was literally asking a question in psychoneurology. We say, what is needed here? Mm -hmm. And what was needed here was, for one thing, it was clear that this young man did not know how to initiate and sustain social interactions Mm -hmm. and confidence. The confidence I could help him with the Ericksonian Mm -hmm. work to deep on an unconscious level to help him feel that he is wonderful, Mm -hmm. that he is great. Mm -hmm. So we were, I was adding those resources and helping him really feel that. The second thing was literally teaching him how to initiate and sustain, <laughs> like how to say hello, how yeah, to introduce yeah. himself, how to speak to people. And um, and that's what we did. And I said, so that's the difference. I mean, mm-hmm. um, is, is, you know, as clear as I can mm-hmm. make it, mm-hmm. the difference is we focus on what is the resource that is going to, the new learning mm-hmm. that is going to make the label irrelevant. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Oh, yeah. I mean, Yay. every <laughs> case I have is, what, is a case mm-hmm. like this, but... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, let's shift gears over here a little bit. One, one more thing, one more I'll, thing. I'll, I'll, okay. I'll just say. Uh, oftentimes when I am working with these patients, mm-hmm. a lot of times they're really being drugged. That young man had mm-hmm. so many drugs on him. I was just thinking of um, another young mm-hmm. man that I work with who had enough anxiety before he went to school. At one point he actually vomited some blood, and he was another mm-hmm. time he jumped, climbed up on his mom's roof. And um, the chief of child psychiatry at that time was working with him, and um, and – I worked with him, and basically what we needed to do was add a new resource so that mm-hmm. in his gut he could link the f- safety that he had mm-hmm. to when he's at home mm-hmm. to being at school and going into this new environment. Yeah. It took a few sessions. He'll never have another panic or anxiety attack. Mm-hmm. I, I love staying in touch with mm-hmm. patients. He's older now, and he's an amazing boy. But mm-hmm. that young man, was a, he was 11 as well. That's why mm-hmm. it made me think of this. And he was on a whole bunch of drugs. He was on Zoloft. Right? His morning cocktail was Zoloft, Celexa, Prozac, Buspar, and Welbutrin <sighs> as his morning cocktail. So this gentleman, it took him a while to get him off all of those psychoactive mm-hmm. meds. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, oftentimes these psychiatrists are doing the best they can with the resources they have. Mm-hmm. That's the resources they know. Mm-hmm. Uh, psychologists or most people are not trained in really how to work with the unconscious, yeah. specifically the way we are. Mm-hmm. So um, so basically you use what you have. <laughs> <laughs> how incredible that he was able to weigh enough of all these drugs and... Right. Yeah. Well, essentially, yeah. he never needed to be yeah. on any of yeah. those drugs in yeah. the first place. Yeah. The best you can hope to do with a psychoactive drug is to stop your brain from doing something we don't want it to mm-hmm. do. Kind of stick mm-hmm. a spoke in the wheels, mm-hmm. if you will. Yeah. There's no chemical balancing going mm-hmm. on. Serotonin goes up and down hundreds mm-hmm. of even thousands of percent. You can't possibly balance mm-hmm. that or know what that would mm-hmm. be. Um, but there's no psychoactive drug that's ever been developed to create something new. Yeah, or a cure, a neural pathway, you know, because when, let's say, we have picture of viruses in our body, we take antibiotics or some kind, you know, mm-hmm. even herbs, mm-hmm. and it will kill the, mm-hmm. you know, right. the bug. And, and that makes sense when there's yeah. a problem, but when yeah. you just don't have a learning, yeah. when yeah. you don't know how to say hello, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. a psychoactive drug is not going to teach yeah. you how to do yeah. that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or if you have anxiety, it's not going to heal the neural pathways, and turn, and so they're healed, and one never has anxiety again. Yeah, and sometimes yeah. life teaches you. So, yeah. for example, if you had a daughter and every time she had a problem, you gave her a shot of whiskey. And imagine yeah. whiskey didn't, imagine it didn't hurt her, even though we know yeah. it did. Yeah. How would that affect her development? Mm-hmm. Sometimes I'm working with a 15-year-old. If that, if that kid's been on psychoactive drugs for two years, I'm sometimes mm-hmm. dealing with the coping mechanisms yeah. of a 13-year-old yeah. because they didn't expand with life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, yeah. that's, you know, that's extremely important to keep in mind, too. 
Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So let's shift gears a little bit over here because Rebel Hearts, Dr. Foreman has been teaching incredible classes on shame at the no, university okay, yeah. and how shame impacts our life. And I would love to talk a little bit more about that and, and mm -hmm. the antidote to shame. Okay. Now we're getting into things that are also very traditional and... Mm -hmm. uh, for example, Kabbalistic, mm -hmm. um, and some of this comes back to, I lived in the ancient old city of Yerushalayim mm -hmm. and I studied mm -hmm. in seminary, yeah. but also learned yeah, in a cave in Telstone, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. some of the traditions that we yeah. studied in Kabbalah yeah. there. Yeah. And so there's a, some of these things, I find that really if we're gonna reference m our biggest modern issues, mm -hmm. we do need that ancient wisdom to help us mm -hmm. you know, understand how to navigate, but then mm -hmm. we can use leading edge technologies to help us in yeah, that kind of marry it together, yeah. 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 So tell us why it has shame so much power over us and how does it affect our lives in such a strong way that we're, most of us are not even aware of probably. Yeah, it's, it's, it's core and in virtually every great wisdom tradition mm -hmm. they talk about it one way or another. Mm -hmm. A lot of it's been changed. Mm -hmm. um, Greg is doing a lot, a lot of work on that, Greg Braden, yeah, Greg right Braden, now yeah. in terms of, uh, you mm -hmm. know, and has done, for example, mm -hmm. talking about the Isaiah mm -hmm. effect and the Dead Sea Scrolls yeah. and kind of bringing out, even in our Western tradition of, of the biblical traditions and these mm -hmm. other things, that the wisdom is there. Mm -hmm. Shame itself is really like a virus, mm -hmm. um, a virus that, a virus gets in your system by fooling the mm -hmm. cell to thinking that yeah. it's part of mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. And that's the way shame is so pervasive and pernicious. Shame gets in and tells you that it's you, that it's mm -hmm. taking care of you, that it's <laughs> protecting you. Mm -hmm. So um, that's how shame comes into us and, and, and it grows. And generally, children are imprinted with it at a young age. And the challenge with, again, with shame is it, sometimes parents unintentionally are using shame when they might want to use healthy pain. For example, mm, if a child's mm -hmm. running across the street and you don't want, you want them to link pain to running across the street, you might say, no, don't do that. Mm -hmm. But when you say you're no good, the mm. problem with shame is mm -hmm. it does the exact opposite thing of what you're wanting to do. I worked with, um, well, I, I think of one lady who was 189 pounds overweight. Mm -hmm. She had amazing amounts of shame. So when she would do, when she would eat more, she would feel more pain and more shame. And what would that do? That would make her eat more. If you link pain to overeating, then you just won't overeat. You yeah. can you can link pain and love who you are. Mm -hmm. Shame tells you you're no good. It actually goes in like a virus. It hooks into you and it changes your identity. It changes your self-image. Mm -hmm. That's what makes shame so deep. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that's why it needs very specific work. All shame can be changed. All shame mm -hmm. can be transformed. Yeah. Um, it's literally, again, it's about a resource. And part mm -hmm. of that resource is transparency. There's, mm -hmm. you know, there's amazing processes that mm -hmm. we're doing. And there's really ancient wisdom that shows us how to do it. What's great about the work we can do with the unconscious and that kind of thing is a lot of times ancient wisdom tells you to be in joy or feel a certain way. Mm -hmm. Now we have the understanding of exactly how we create that. You generate joy. Yeah, you know? yeah, Sorry. absolutely. And can you go a little bit deeper or maybe mm -hmm. even give us mm -hmm. an example about some of the tools that can help us change shame into love or joy? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To, to kind of, um, in other words, you, well, one of them is, is transparency, mm -hmm. okay? Um, certainly, the, the point that makes shame so hard to work with is mm -hmm. it has the person hide. Mm -hmm. It has them hide the challenge they have. It has them hide mm -hmm. the issue they have. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that is very helpful to do is to create in your interactions with anyone, you can change somebody's life if you can really help them know mm -hmm. that they're unconditionally loved, they're mm -hmm. unconditionally accepted. Mm -hmm. You can hold that vibration for them and, it, and let them know slowly that they can bring this out yeah, yeah. into the light mm -hmm. and that they can, you know, step by step start to open this. The other thing is actually being aware about vibrations versus thoughts. Thoughts have an ability to hook us. And I'm not saying the mind is our enemy mm -hmm. by no means. I'm saying that we want to remain integrated. If you think yeah. about moments in your life, let's call them anti-shame moments, the mm -hmm. moments where you just felt the most incredible love mm -hmm. or your heart opening mm -hmm. or life-changing moments, you'll notice that you probably weren't too much in your head, you weren't too mm -hmm. intellectual, mm -hmm. you weren't too... So one of the things I just want to talk about is um, in the Torah or the Bible or whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it, they talk about when, when the first man and woman were cast out of mm -hmm. you know, heaven so yeah. to speak. Mm -hmm. And what kept them out was uh, what they call an 
angel that was a fiery sword. Mm -hmm. And by the way, in Kabbalah, we know that this fiery sword is called the mind. (laughs) So literally, (laughs) if you do think for just a moment, one of the most profound moments you ever had in your life, my guess is you went into a space where of total Mm -hmm. joy, of total Mm -hmm. opening, of just feeling, Mm -hmm. of just feeling in your own heart. um, So part of it is opening to these incredible spaces, creating these moments in your life. And yeah, there are processes, there are Mm -hmm. protocols. It'd be hard for me to tell um, to what well, maybe sometime I'll come on and I'll run everyone through a protocol. But um, <laughs> mm-hmm. but that yeah, would be amazing. yeah. But yeah. but but generally the, the opposite of shame is love. If you feel it, constriction is mm-hmm. shame. Mm-hmm. And can you feel when you think of something that is beautiful? Can mm-hmm. you feel how beauty yeah. opens you? Absolutely. So. By the way, that's psychoneurology. Psyche is just the mind. Neurology mm-hmm. is more than just your physical body. It's what it's like to have energy running through your meridians, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. If you don't take that into account, you're really missing too much of the picture. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that sense of opening, that 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 ability to allow yourself to be is mm-hmm. essential mm-hmm. to to being the counter to shame, to kind of bringing light. Mm -hmm. And shame is like, in a way, you could think of it like light. If you bring light to this, it literally is a flower that will bloom. But when it's in the dark, Mm -hmm. it'll tell you, don't Mm -hmm. let them see us. No Mm -hmm. one will, you know, Mm -hmm. they'll hate you. Everyone will hate you. You know, these kinds of (laughs) hooking kind of, yeah, yeah, Yeah. notions. Thank you, thank you, thank you for sharing that. And you talk about something that heaven is a vibration. Mm -hmm. Share a little bit more about that. <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah. I mean, literally, um, <laughs> living <laughs> itself is an inside job. Mm-hmm. And um, and even here, I live in Los Angeles, as mm-hmm. do you. And to me, that is, Los Angeles is a place of incredible duality and incredible choosing. Mm-hmm. It is absolutely heaven on earth for yes, me. I'm surrounded is, with yeah. people like Christy, like this great, great grand master, like this African tribal chief. And, um, and for me, Los Angeles is heaven, but I choose that. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeshua, Jesus said, Mm -hmm. um, you know, even in the, with all the mistranslations, Mm -hmm. there's things that have come out that are incredibly still wise. And he said, the kingdom of heaven is within and all around. What that means is, it doesn't mean it's a specific geographical location. It means it's a vibrational location. Mm -hmm. And that goes more into, if you have an understanding of the, some of the ancient Bible stuff Mm -hmm. with Sufi understanding or Kabbalistic Mm -hmm. understanding, Mm -hmm. it really helps you understand everything is a vibration for us. I've, a, I've had the pleasure of asking thousands of parents through the world in you know, mm-hmm. London and the Middle mm-hmm. East and here, and what do you want for your children? And they all answer the same exact thing. They say, I want my child to be happy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then if I ask a little more, they'll say, yeah, I'd like them to love who they are, et cetera. Mm-hmm. That's all basically a vibration. If you think of the times in your life that, you were, that were most joyful to you, mm-hmm. there might have been circumstances that weren't successful or things like that, but yeah. you still felt amazing. Mm-hmm. The same is true of some, you could have had everything you thought was good, but you were unhappy. Mm-hmm. You'll, th- you'll kind of store that as a negative memory. Yeah, you won't yeah feel good absolutely. About it. So mm-hmm. vibration is literally everything. I was riding down to Pinka Canyon. I, um, <laughs> I looked over at a, a guy riding next to me and I was talking to my friend Remy Kabaka, the tribal chief, and we were laughing and this other poor gentleman <laughs> was clearly in hell. And I thought, wow, we're 10 feet apart mm-hmm. and I'm in heaven and he's mm-hmm. in hell. And that's that's what vibration yeah, is. So yeah. using your mind and nervous system in a way that can help you live that every day and, mm-hmm. and that becomes mm-hmm. a habit mm-hmm. is really what we're about. Yeah, that's amazing. What is the most inspiring thing about you, your work? What inspires mm-hmm. you the most about working with your patients, teaching, lecturing? All of those things are, I mean, I literally feel like the luckiest person I know. But when Mm I um, get to touch these beautiful souls, the Mm -hmm. word for blessing means to overflow. Mm -hmm. When I get to help these beautiful souls overflow and then watch them go out and reach out to all (laughs) hundreds or thousands of other people, Mm -hmm. um, I'm humbled by that. Mm -hmm. It's so beautiful. That's beautiful. Thank you. And before we're getting close to the end of the show, before we wrap up over here, Share maybe one piece of inspiration, one thought you want to leave our Rebel Hearts audience with today. Mm, okay. Um, yeah, I was going to talk about this amazing quadriplegic blind black person, but there was another thought I wanted to share with you. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think you got to meet Ross David. I'm not sure if you did. I did meet him. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. So this incredible brother of mine mm-hmm. speaks 11 languages. The mm-hmm. Prince of Ethiopia gave him the title. Ross, he said, I want to give you a gift. Mm-hmm. And he brought me one day to this gentleman 
named Rav Yitzhak Kaduri. He was a 104-year-old Mukabal. I didn't know it at the time. We were walking. I thought the Pope was in town because there were literally wow. lines two blocks down. And we walked by them, and we walked by these security guards and walked upstairs, and everyone was like secret service and opening these doors. Mm-hmm. We finally got mm-hmm. into this main area, and and uh, this, this man who was so old, he looked... Almost like he moved like E.T. Mm-hmm. It was incredible. <laughs> and and um, and he was talking to this woman, and, and they just immediately, she'd left as soon as, you know, David yeah. came in, and, he, mm-hmm. and David kissed his hand, and he said, um, I want to introduce you to the Rav. He said, and I'm going to give you an incredible gift. Mm-hmm. You can ask the Rav one question, mm-hmm. um, and um, it could be about other lifetimes. It could be about anything. This was a man who could look at you and tell you about anything you wanted mm-hmm. to know. And so I thought, oh, my God, I wish I had more time <laughs> to think about it. But I, 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 mm-hmm. I just opened and I just trusted whatever would come through me. Mm-hmm. And I said, and you'd say, you wouldn't say you. You'd say, is the Rav, is there mm-hmm. one thing the Rav can tell me that would help someone master life? Is there one thing that would bring joy to the divine, to, mm-hmm. you know, the creator? Is there one thing that you could do that matters about, above anything else about how to really live this life mm-hmm. and fully master it and give? And, and he said, um, in Hebrew, he said, to David, very quietly, that's the best question I've heard in five years. Wow. Yeah, and he, um, I won't say it all in Hebrew, I'll just mm-hmm. say it in English. He said, mm-hmm. um, he said, yes, there is an answer to your question, but do not misunderstand how profound this is what I'm going to say to you. Mm-hmm. And I said, okay. And he said, uh, so he was quiet for about 15 seconds, and he said, in Hebrew, the happiest person wins. He said, and do not misunderstand this. Now, I have to tell you, at that time, it was like we were underwater. There was so mm-hmm. much pressure and power from, I couldn't even talk. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I just was choked. And mm-hmm. so was David. We left. We couldn't even speak for like two hours. Mm-hmm. And that has been a like an impetus for mm-hmm. all our work since mm-hmm. then, is literally understanding the road to joy is joy. Mm-hmm. And Vibration is everything. Yeah. So there's nothing better than living in the highest possible vibration, and that's thriving. Thank you so much. That's a perfect place to finish over. Thank you for sharing <laughs> that wisdom. <laughs> now for all of our rebel hearts, what's the best way to get in touch with you? Okay. Well, um, you could go to the, my personal site, which would be uh, Colby For- Dr. Foreman at colbyforeman.org. Um, you can call... Uh, 310-877-2872. Mm-hmm. Um, or you can, uh, generally you can send me that email if you're interested in our university and our programs and those kinds of things. I speak to each person and I get to know each person personally. So you can actually send something directly to the university or again to that email, drforeman at colbyforeman.org. Awesome. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. And then bjornuniversity.org mm-hmm. is the website that has information about the programs mm-hmm. and anything that you're doing at the university. Correct. Correct. And for all of our rebel hearts who want to get a little bit more, a bigger peek into what Dr. Foreman is offering, he has a summit coming up with the university in February. And that's it's a four-day summit from 10 a.m. To, to, to late at night. Yeah. And it's just like an immersion of love and wisdom and ancient teachings and a lot of the things that he does at the university. And that summit is open for anyone in the public Correct. who's in, yeah. Los, in the Los Angeles era. What's we're, to come down we're here? We're eating the best food. Mm-hmm. We're doing, you know, imagine the wisdom of Qigong and mm-hmm. Kundalini and breath work and all and, mm-hmm. and Kabbalah and these heart opening, you know, mm-hmm. uh, pieces that we're doing and, and just living in this immersive environment that is yeah. for us. It's for yeah. heaven on earth. And mm-hmm. so if you'd like to get a taste of what we can create together, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. We, we'd be honored to have you. Yeah. And what are the dates for that? Um, it's it's January 29th, 30th, 31st and the February 1st and February 1st. Okay. So put that in your calendar. Get in touch with him. I highly recommend if you're in L.A. or can make the trip over here to check it out. And we're going to wrap up for today. Thank you so much for sharing your incredible wisdom and energy and everything that you taught us today. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And Rebel Hearts, thank you for joining us today. And as you know, the best conversations happen after that or they continue to happen after that. So go to our YouTube channel. Leave us a comment. The interview should be up in a couple of days. Leave us a five-star rating and review on iTunes because that's going to help us bring more amazing guests onto this show. And we'll see you again next Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific time. And remember, in the meantime, to rebel on. In the future, talk radio will actually educate, inspire, and make you think. The future is now. 
topics and music that affect your life from Universal Broadcasting Network. Tune in at upnradio.com.